All right, so today we're looking at something a little different. You can probably see this. Uh, this is a pool pump on an in-ground pool. This is a Pentair uh, slash Stay Right Duraglass pump. And you can probably tell by the noise that there's something wrong here. That motor is really loud. So there's actually two problems. So we have a water leak right down there. I don't know if you guys can see it actively dripping. But there's also water dripping from behind here where the where the motor is. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit better there. Don't know if you can see that that well, but there's water dripping right from under there. So that indicates that there's a shaft, what's called a shaft seal is bad. There's a shaft seal that is uh, between the impeller of the motor, or the impeller of the pump, and the motor shaft. I'll show you when we take it apart. And that keeps all of the water from the pool away from the innards of the motor. And what's happened is that has failed that's allowing water to get into the motor and it caused the bearings to go bad, hence that noise that you hear. So what I think we'll do is we'll pull this apart, um, maybe try to replace the bearings. I'm not sure, this motor looks like it's been around a while. That might be a non-starter. Um, and if not, we'll replace the motor. It's a pretty easy job. I'll show you guys how to do it. Um, but just real high level summary. All you really have to do is Loosen this band clamp right here. Remove this back cover here, disconnect the electrical, then you can take the whole thing onto your workbench and work on it there. All right, it's a couple days later. Um, you can see that I already got started a little bit here. This electrical switch just kind of fell apart when you know, it just kind of does its own thing. So. I took the switch out, um, just wired it together for now. Um, so we'll just disconnect the electrical right here. I am gonna replace the wire down through the pump because the wire ends down there and not looking the greatest. So we'll keep these isolated and out of the way because these are our incoming power. And now we can Unscrew this. Might need a wrench for that. Let's take the back cover off and disconnect the wires. It should just be two screws here and they're already loose. And again, my strategy is just take this whole thing over to the bench once we disconnect it from the rest of the pump. And this is wired for 240 volts. Your pump might be wired for 240, it might be wired for 120. A lot of pumps are selectable and just gotta read the directions. I believe this one, you just move this connector around if you need to switch it. But here in South Florida, most pumps are going to be 240 volts. So now I was speaking to the homeowner and he elected to just replace the motor. He doesn't want to deal with replacing bearings or anything like that. So I'm going to respect his wishes, replace the entire motor. I do have another one but I think I might try replacing the bearings in this one anyway, just for fun. Just to show you the procedure in case your motor isn't that far gone. And if you get them in time, quite often you don't have to replace the whole motor. And this is why I was gonna replace the wires, just because these don't look so hot down here. So our electrical is disconnected. Now we have to go over to the wet side of the pump and take off that band clamp couple things you got to keep in mind with these Pentair Duraglass pumps too. They have different parts depending upon when it was made. I believe the cutoff year is 1998. They changed the at least the shaft seal design and possibly other things. I believe this one is a pre-1998. That said, I believe you can convert a pre-1998 to a post-1998 by just removing a cone inside the seal plate, which I will show you if this one has it. 
You have to be careful before you order parts though, because a lot of times, and this is pretty common in South Florida, I would say at least 50% of the time when I walk up to a pool pump like this, the wrong motor is on there. So you gotta check your impeller and the diffuser below it to see what it's rated for. You can look that up pretty easily by finding the part number. You just go in online. So we gotta disconnect our ground too, which is right here. There we go. So I'll go, we'll pull this whole thing over to the bench and resume there. All right, I got the pump on the bench here, so it's time to take it apart. So first things first, let's get this diffuser plate off. And for that, some models you need a, a hex head. This one's fill, uh, just a flathead screw. Just a couple of screws here. And I mentioned before to make sure that you order the right pump motor. Um, but in this case, I will be violating that rule because they didn't have that motor in stock. So this you can just set aside for now. This is your impeller. So this is the most important piece to pay attention to when ordering a replacement motor. To get this impeller off, it's reverse threaded. In this motor, you just use a 7 16 wrench on the back. There's a little, in fact, I'll show you. There's a little cutout on the shaft right down in here. You might have to rotate it, but there, that can lock the shaft. Then you just simply To come right off. Geez, that one's on there pretty good. Might need a strap wrench. Come on, I'm sure I can pull this off. There we go. It's not reverse threaded, my mistake. Okay, so there's our impeller. And this is really the most important thing to look at right there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a part number there. C105138P and then EB after it. Look that up online, you can see what this impeller is designed for. Now I'm willing to bet once we take this apart that the two halves of this shaft seal are split. Um, that's probably why it was leaking here, and probably why it wrecked the motor. So can you just pull right off? Yeah, there you go. So that's what happened. These should be together and inseparable, but they separated. So if you see water leaking between this seal plate and the motor, like down in here, if you tend to it right away, you can save the motor usually. But if you let it go for weeks or a week or whatever, uh, you're going to wreck the motor, which is what happened here. All right, so enough yapping. Now it's time to separate the motor from the seal plate. And for that, you need a 916 socket. The longer bolts go on the bottom. And now you can separate the motor from the seal plate. Just like that. I'll lift this off and set it aside. But before I do, this is why you want to tend to that leak really quickly. So this is all swollen and rust jacking here. So this motor is garbage. Okay, I just cleaned the seal plate up a bit with a garden hose. Wash the heavy stuff off. Should be able to press this. Oh, it just fell out. This is the other piece of the shaft seal. You can see it's actually chipped right there. Okay, and here is our rebuild kit. And you can see it says 1998 and after. Pretty sure this is a pre-1998 just by the fragments of this part number that are here. But again, the pre-1998 pre models have a, um, a, like a copper cone that's in here and this one didn't have it. So I think we can use the 1998 after seal kit. So I'm going to go and just clean out this bore a little bit um, because we got to seal against that with this little rubber here. 
Okay, got it all cleaned out. Just used this, a sponge. So now we press in this half of the shaft seal. It's best to not touch that shiny surface there unless you absolutely have to and minimize how much you touch. At least make sure your hands are clean because that's what the shaft seal seals against as the motor turns. So simply just press it in with your fingers. There we go. I'm just gonna wipe it off with a rag and look at it from this side just to make sure it's seated all the way around. Should look something like that. Now the other half of the shaft seal, piece that broke, Notice how these don't separate. This is all one piece. And that goes down like that. But first, we have to mount our motor uh, to the seal plate. Okay, got the stand all cleaned up. Now we will take our new motor. and mount our seal plate. I like to leave the thread protector on the motor just to make sure it doesn't scratch the shaft seal going in. So I'll just take one of these long bolts, get it started on the bottom just to hold things in place. Got all the bolts started, now we'll just snug them up with a ratchet. Okay, the seal plate is bolted on nice and securely. We'll go ahead and remove this protector right there. Put the shaft seal on. And then we'll simply screw the impeller in. We'll probably have to take the back of this motor off. Put a wrench on it like we did to take the impeller off. So, I'll take this electrical cover off. All right, where do we stick our wrench? Does this one not have a place to put a wrench? Maybe we can sneak one in there. Oh, we probably have to remove the bracket for the capacitor down here. Kind of annoying. Let's see if that opens things up. There we go. So I'm just turning the impeller on with my hand on the other side while the wrench locks the shaft in place. There we go. Lock our capacitor back in place with this bracket. Wonderful. Now we'll go ahead and reinstall our diffuser. Let's get the screw started by hand. A couple of you have asked me about this screw gun in prior videos. Unfortunately, DeWalt stopped making this years ago. It takes a 7.2 volt NICAD battery. That's how old this thing is. But I use it for just about everything. I mean, it's not an impact driver, but I've, ha I've hung cap cabinets with it before. Um, done a lot of stuff that it wasn't designed to do, and it just plows right through it. All right, enough babbling. Let's get 
This kit comes with some O-rings. Some we will use, some we will not. So this is one of the O-rings that was leaking, so we need this one. This goes on the skimmer basket. And this one here goes around here. Notice this one is missing. That happens. There we go. So, all right, let's look at the electrical compartment on the back and make sure that we are wired for 240 volts. Let me get you guys in there. So now your motor might be a bit different, but this one comes pre-wired or preset for 240 volts. There's actually a selector switch right here. It's in the 200, it says 230, but 240 volt position. If you rotate it, there's, I guess, 120 volt position up there, or 115. So then we just hook up uh, our wires to these two terminals plus our ground over here. So I think we're done with everything that we need to do in the garage. We can take this thing back out to the, the pump assembly and hook it back up. Off camera, I wired up a new switch right here and a new cover. Also pulled fresh wires down to the motor like I said I was going to do. Um, got the conduit hooked back up to the motor. Um, don't have the pump assembled. I don't have that band clamp on yet. Um, first step in doing that is to put some of this silicone grease that comes with the kit on the O-ring that's that we put on that diffuser. So I'll just put some on my finger and goop it on. This is pretty important. Otherwise, if, if you don't do this, you'll fight with this thing trying to get the pump halves back together. So you can be pretty liberal with it. You won't hurt anything. And then have your band clamp ready. I like to squirt a little bit of lubricant on these threads here, whether it's fluid film or you know, oil, your choice, just to keep things moving smoothly. I just sprayed it with a little bit of fluid film. Keep that up and out of the dirt. Then we'll just slide the two halves together. we go. Then we'll slide our band clamp under the pump. Oh wait, we need the O-ring. What am I doing? Most important thing. Wow, how did I forget that? It's going to leak like crazy if we don't put this bad boy on. So same deal. Put some uh, silicone lubricant on this O-ring as well. Not super important here because there's no sliding going on, but it might help to seal through any gaps. Just put a thin coating on. Good enough. Got to take the old one out though. This is nice and flat. Flat as a pancake, that's why it's not sealing right. And that silicone lube will help hold the O-ring in place too. Took a little bit of muscling, but I got the everything together here. Um, what actually helped a little bit, I took a little bit of this silicone grease and I put a couple dabs in the groove for the O-ring to help hold it in place as well. So now you just got to tighten down this screw thing here to clamp the two halves together. Just like that. I'm gonna wire this thing off camera just because there's no space here and you guys aren't gonna be able to see what I'm doing anyway because I'm gonna be right here. Um, but essentially, you might have two red wires, two black wires, um, regardless of the color. Um, 
For 240 volt operation, just put one wire on one hot screw, the other wire on the other hot screw. It doesn't matter. The polarity doesn't matter. There is no polarity. Um, and the green wire, the ground, goes to the green screw. So that's really the only one that matters where it goes. Again, if you have a 120 volt operation, a 120 volt pump, you may have a black wire and a white wire, in which case the screws are probably going to be, will they be colored? Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't really tell from here, but regardless, this is a 240 volt pump. So these are each 120 to 120 volts to ground, 180 degrees out of phase, which gives you a 240 volt circuit. So I'm just going to cut these down, strip them back, put one under that screw, one under that screw. Okay, got everything wired. As you can see, the two red wires individually are under those two silver looking screws and you have the green wire, the ground, going under the green screw. Again, this is 240 volt operation, so pretty easy. Next, I'm gonna replace the O-ring on the skimmer basket. This thing has a cover. Gonna grease up the O-ring with that silicone stuff, just like all the others. I'm gonna pour some water in the skimmer and we'll power it up. This is a good time to check for leaks between the two halves here. If you see anything, just tighten the clamp a bit. I don't see anything, but we'll snug down the clamp a bit. There's already an O-ring on there. There's double O-ring. That's nice. All right. Let's power it up. What do you say? So we'll do on and then on. She's running. She's quiet. Let's let her prime up and I'll check for leaks. Yeah, she's been running a couple minutes now. I don't see any leaks. I'll give you guys a peek. Sorry in advance about any audio issues. I don't know why, but my phone keeps on switching back and forth to different inputs. Anyway, so no more dripping there. If there is any dripping, it's probably just a, uh, I need to tighten that up there, but I don't, it's not dripping visibly that I can see. And more importantly, we don't see any water dripping out back there under the motor. There is a little bit of fluid film on those bolts, so if you see a weird yellowy residue, that's the fluid film. Motor's obviously a lot quieter as well. All right, let's turn it off. Let's finish the job. Put this back cover on. Gonna fluid film the bolts because they get rusty pretty quick. And just tighten the screws. You astute viewers probably noticed that timer mechanism isn't grounded. It was like that when I got here. So this is the, the ground from the panel. This is the ground down to the box and the pump. So I just use some of the, I'm going to use some of the extra wire here and just run a ground up to that screw there. Probably excessive, but that's just how I like to do things. I do them. Might as well do them right. A little trick when you're dealing with stranded wire and trying to put it under a screw. So get our approximate length, maybe go to about here. Pull the sheathing back, but you don't take it all the way off like that. Now it should be a lot easier to wrap under the screw without it oozing out. Just like that. There 
we go. And you can trim off the excess as well. Like that. Tuck this nicely under this cover here. I think that's it, folks. I'll turn it back on. We do have to put our on jumper back. I think the pool guy uh, left it off. So now we can shut the motor off here. We can also shut it off there. We don't have any leaks. Motor's a lot quieter, problem solved. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Um, if you have a Pentair Duraglass or a similar pump, this should show you how to renew it in, you know, pretty inexpensively with just a few parts and a couple hours of labor. So if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, stay, stay safe, and thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bit of bonus footage for you. Let's see if we can get this old motor apart. A couple of quarter inch bolts that usually break when the motors are pretty bad. And this one is feeling that way. It's getting springy. Let's see how this one feels. It feels pretty much the same way. I think these are gonna break. Sure did. Nope, I just glided over it. Nope, stripped out the head. Yeah, this thing's done. This is a great reason why when this problem starts and you start seeing water dripping out of this area down here, you shut that pump off and take care of that shaft seal immediately. Otherwise, you're gonna spend 250 bucks for a motor instead of $10 for a shaft seal or whatever they cost today. So anyway, take care guys.